keep telling me to make it To a spot where we will stay good Finished bottles never wasted Cause that's where I'm from I'm feeling like old school fixed it That's all I need I'm getting my low right Sunday That's all I need Good job, you guys. Thanks, man. Good job, everybody. Oh, let's do it now. Let's okay. do it now. Let's do it now. Let's, let's do it now. now. Okay, so, so wait, and, and Columbus, I don't think you have a clue how bad this, no, I don't. this gun hurts. Would you like an example? Would you like to try? Would, would you put your butt on the line and... Uh, you guys can shoot me. To, to yeah, yeah. Have Scott. How about you shoot Clonvis first? I'll take. Can one, I take one? one shot in the can touch. I take one of his shots and give him four? Was what? That no. Oh, that's happened. I'd like to. I mean, just as a, as a gesture. I mean, of that's a pretty. Goodwill that's a pretty show. amazing friend right there. In tribute. Like, or I'll I, or I, I'll take one and I'll still shoot him five times. I had four last week, and I'll tell you, it was. Excruciating. I'm, just, I, I'm, and the I'm interested to see if it's uh, as bad as you guys say or if you're hamming it up. So I'm, I'm willing to take uh, a well, shot. Yeah. Okay. I would I, love for you to take a shot to see if we're hamming it fine. up. Fine. Shoot you me. You know what? He'll take one of your shots. You're amazing. Shoot me. All right. Good. Holy He's going to take one of your shots. Wow. <laughs> I'm such a pushover today. Thank All right. you. All right. Let's do it. It's because right. I'm in a good mood. Okay. So do you get to, who's going to shoot me? Scott, Scott will shoot you Scott first. You. Okay. Okay. It's only fair. Out of respect. Am I going to take my butt out? Yeah. Now put it up against the. Yeah, go up against the wall there. Just your undies. Let's see if he's got a lot of gear. Rosy red marks on him. Clive has got a lot of gear. He's got. <laughs> hey! hey! Good morning, everybody. Hello. Friday. Gang's all here. Oh yeah. Gang's all here for the last time, for a week. <laughs> right. Because Learn's gone Monday. Did you oh. almost fall off the chair? No. My chair was low. Oh, okay. These things slide around like the yeah. the floor in here is slick. Yeah, so if you start yeah, going, yeah. it's a uh, roller. You're going. Ring. Yeah, I got the things under my wheels that they put uh, like underneath uh, airplanes. A little chalk. Yeah, the little wedges. Mm. Uh, <laughs> a little tennis ball <laughs> action underneath. Your I have wheels. a whole like crew that comes in. Hmm. They yep. put the uh, the things under the wheels. Yeah, they with the, the sticks. They got the orange sticks. The orange so come sticks, on in, yeah. crew. Boy, Lauren was visibly upset when we told her that Bill Bellamy was coming in today. Yeah. I am aroused. I okay. had no idea he was okay. coming in today. I would have dressed up. <laughs> I'm really pissed that you guys didn't tell me. Uh, you look I, great. What would what, have changed? What would have changed? I mean, I would have, like, yeah, what done something with myself. I don't know. I just, I know, I have varying, women have varying levels of getting ready. You look fine. And today yeah, was my great. Friday, last day before vacation level. You look fine. I almost wore sweatpants today. I'm glad I put my jeans on. Well. Listen, it was a last-minute thing uh, that we found out that it was coming in. I'm excited. Sorry, I didn't put it in the, uh, in I, the memo. I go, wait, a, this is literally how it went. You guys were talking about Bill Bellamy, and I was like, oh, my God, Bill Bellamy's so gorgeous. <laughs> and then you're like, yeah, Bill Bellamy's coming in. And I go, when is Bill Bellamy coming? And you're like, oh, at 9 o'clock. I go, what? Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> so the varying levels of, of ready, like if 10 is like, you know, uh, makeup, I'm, I'm, uh, ten, hair makeup. Ten is not on. Ten is like wedding, right? And one yeah. is pajamas. Yeah, let's say that. What is today? Today I'm at like a solid six, six, where like I did put pants on, I did put makeup on, but I didn't do hair. Like I showered last night. So Bill Bellamy would have got a what? Yeah. I would have. I would have been better. I would. Bill Bellamy will come nine? in dressed <laughs> as like an eight or nine. Yeah, as that yes. dude is. That dude is an impeccable dresser. I yeah. have been in love with Bill Bellamy since 1997's How to Be a Player. Like, I used to watch that movie when it was on HBO, you know, just like you, whenever it was on. And I'd be like, this man is so damn gorgeous. And now I'm going to meet him. I love when we have people who come in that I grew up watching during my formidable years. I mean, mm -hmm. he was on MTV for a long time. Yes. And you know what's wild? That was a long time ago. Yeah. I know. He does not look that different. No, he doesn't. Right. No. He's the same. He's, he's the same. He's I mean, the man was in Any Given Sunday. He's aging exquisitely. Oh. Yeah. He was wait. in an Oliver Stone movie. I can't wait. 
He is the inventor of the term booty call. That's right. <laughs> that is the greatest right. Greatest wide receiver of all time. I am the greatest wide receiver <laughs> of all time. I just remember that from from any game of Sunday. Yeah, he's like in this <laughs> locker by himself, repeating it to himself. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm going to say, all right, Bill, and now a scene from Any Given Sunday. Mm. And then you launch into your version. Into I, your version of it. I bet he will not like that. <laughs> <laughs> he's probably going to look and go, what the hell is that? And then you say, oh, Any Given Sunday. Is that some me? of your lines. Like, oh, oh okay, yeah, it was 20 years yeah. ago. Can we this just guy keep, was in an Al Pacino thanks. movie. Let's keep Bill Bellamy in a good awesome. mood, okay? I need, I need full Bellamy Listen, today. when you walk in this room, <laughs> you're automatically in a good mood. Yeah. Yeah, good automatically. Very good point. We're just so, our vibe, our energy is just so, mm. Mm -hmm. hey, you can't help but smile when you walk through that door. That's right. Right over there, mm -hmm. that door. That door. So Bill Bell me in at uh, 9 o'clock today. I didn't realize Brett Michaels was in town tonight. Oh, yes. We, surprise, we're taking you to Party Gras tonight. We're dragging you there. He and, he and Bill Bellamy go everywhere together. That's right. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> didn't you know that? I didn't know that. Mark McGrath is going to be there. Sugar Ray. <sighs> wow. Well, sold. Part of Jefferson Airplane. <laughs> sold. Will be there. Or Starship. Sold. Now, that's going to be hot tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, they're talking a high of 103. Woo it's going to be misery. That's right. Dude, it was hot. I it was so hot yesterday that, like, the How AC hot was it, Rafe? My, uh, <laughs> kill me. Um, it was so hot. <laughs> <laughs> I, I when we were driving uh, yesterday to our thing that we did together, it was like the AC was on full blast and the car still just never got. You know, usually you can get your AC going cold enough that you got to turn it yeah. down. I had it on full blast and was still uncomfortable in my car. And that's not a good sign. No, never no. a good sign. No, and then <clears throat> I guess you know it's outside. Yeah, outside at the amphitheater. Did you go to Manchester Orchestra last night? Yeah, I went there last night. Up at uh, St. Louis Music Park? Yeah, they're incredible. So Manchester Orchestra and Jimmy Eat World played up at St. Louis Music Park. And I know on, on Channel 2, on the news, they had, like, things are happening. You know, at the St. Louis Music Park tonight, there's a big concert. Uh, here's what we're doing to help keep the patrons cool. Oh. Misting and, fans. Yep, they had that. They finally installed some big old fans up in the uh, up in the rafters. Nice. Which I wondered how effective that... Not effective at all. Okay. They look cool, though. I can't say. Well, it just moves the air around, I guess. Maybe psychologically. Like, oh, yeah, look, they put fans yeah. in. Right. I feel a difference. Well, it's right. also nice if the tickets weren't that great at selling. At least you have fans there in the rafters. Ah, oh, I on, see. Man. Yeah. <sighs> Miserable. Okay. Hmm? I, you know, I, I just want, like, do you guys ever wish that you could wear skirts or something, like, when you go to, because, like, yesterday I had that remote with Impact Life, and I, I was dressed, like, bare minimally because I... I thought we were going to be outside with the blood drive truck. Mm -hmm. And so I put on a romper. But before that, I was like, oh, I might want to wear a skirt with some, like, man underwear underneath, like, some biker shorts. Because, like, that, to me, is the coolest. Why don't you wear, like, a long skirt when, I mean, and you get with away nothing. with wearing no underwear. Yeah, but then I get, like, the chafing, oh. you know. So that's what the long underwear are for. But, you know, you guys could wear skirts. Mm -hmm. Like, you know. Well, we could. Chills. We could do whatever I mean, we do want. You, do you ever, you could. Do you ever feel like that's an option, like, as far as cooling down? There was, uh, back in, like, 1998, 1999, uh, there was, I mean, a terrible heat wave in New York City. And uh, I will admit that uh, cruising around uh, my girlfriend's apartment, put on a skirt. I've seen See? the picture. Put on a long, flowy skirt. I've Dude. Seen, I've seen the picture. It's air conditioning. Long, yes, clothing. that's right, this guy. I love it. <laughs> Wore a kilt. You shave your legs? He just started... Wearing a kilt. I became Irish for one summer. Good Heck yeah, you. my man. Welcome. Come to my people. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Making the rounds on uh, online, there's a collection of hot weather hacks. And like most hacks, some of them are clever. Some of them are dumb. A couple of them are, are actually useful. So uh, here's what they say. Buckle your seatbelt when you leave your car. So that when you get back in, the metal buckle won't be oh, so hot. It'll smart. burn you. Smart. Okay. That's a clever one. If your home's HVAC system is struggling to keep the house cool, it's possibly uh, a dirty filter. Okay. Uh, you probably heard of this one. We've talked about this before. Make sure your fan is switched to spin counterclockwise to create downdraft and push colder air towards you. There's usually a switch at the base of the, of the ceiling fan. Okay. When you start driving, don't roll down all the windows. 
only roll down the driver's and passenger's windows. Interesting. The cross breeze will be much stronger. Okay. If you're wearing sandals and you have to take them off, put them face down. That way, when you put them back on, your feet won't burn. Uh, put your suntan lotion in the fridge to enhance its cooling effects. Uh, put a couple plastic bottles, three-fourths full of water in the freezer. When the water's frozen, put the bottle in front of a fan and rotate when thawed. Okay. Hmm. Never thought about that uh, sunscreen in the fridge thing. Not a bad hack. Quite interesting. Not a bad mm -hmm. hack. Put a large pot of cool water on the burner over your oven vent. When the oven is on, it will help keep your kitchen cool in the summer. Yeah, I guess if you're out on a, on a beach or a boat or whatever, wherever the heck, you might have a cooler, too, with ice. Put the sunscreen in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, it's tempting to keep your windows open when it's hot, but if you have no air conditioning, close all the windows and shades that are sun-facing. Uh, one person even suggested putting your car's windshield shade over a window. And the easiest way to cool down in high heat is to dunk your shirt in water and then wear it. Of course, it depends on where you are. The wet t-shirt look is not always appropriate. Ew. There you go. <coughs> Take not, those. Not a fan. BQ. Yeah. I will wet say, shirt. Yeah, I don't like, I mean, uh, I, I wear like sw the, the swim shirt sometimes, you know, like especially if I'm, uh, if I got like a life jacket on, I'll always have a swim shirt under just because like, you know. Chafing. Yeah. You know like, why your nips chafing out. I don't like my That's nipples right. the way they are. Uh, but I'm not a giant mm -hmm. fan of the wet shirt. But here's my I'm, here's my question: Do you guys like the spray uh, sunscreen no. or the lotion? Lotion all the way. I think I love the spray. I, th I think I've gone full thing? spray. You know what I like? No, Whatever my I'm wife just, like, buys. Breathing it in. No, you know what it is? It's time. I'm still like a ten year old kid, and uh, and by the time I'm putting sunscreen on, I just want to get out there. I just want to play. I just want to yeah. fish. I just want to. I just uh, want to. What my wife buys? So taking the time to rub everything yeah. just, like, takes forever. And I feel like a 10-year-old kid, and I admit it. That's kind of how I am in my soul. But uh, I just want to spray and go. And yeah. the, the spray is freaking sweet, man. We're there. I feel I feel lucky to be alive when I'm spraying <laughs> on sunscreen. <laughs> you know, thank God for my wife who, you know, takes care of uh, myself and the kids. You know, I, don't, I don't know what she buys. I, I just, if I need sunscreen, it's there. Like, she buys it. I have no say in that kind of stuff. Do you like the spray, though? Or do you guys get the rub stuff? I bet you do the lotion. Uh, yeah, we're a lotion family. Because, I mean, I remember some people don't like the spray because you in, like you ingest it gets into your lungs. Well, well yeah, I'm not, keep I'm not taking deep breaths. Getting burned. I think it's yeah. unreliable. I notice when I use the spray, I still get burned. Mm. It's too oh, thin. Really? I haven't, I haven't like been burned in forever. I get a thin coating on there or something, and it's like, I'm like, is this Crisco? What am I putting on? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you lube up with the lotion... You can you can feel it. Oh yeah, you can feel it like blacking thick. out them UV rays. Yeah, get it on there thick. It's a horrible feeling. I hate putting stuff on my skin like that. I oh yeah, it's. I don't want to feel greasy. Yeah, I hate that. I but, hate that man. feeling, but you got to do it. <clears throat> oh yeah. Yeah, my my trick is I use the lotion inside when it's still AC and all that stuff, and let it dry. And then whenever I go outside, you know, after I've been out for a while, then I'll spray. Oh man! Because the double the coat. spray too, you got to be coat. careful because some of it has that benzene stuff in it, which mm -hmm. is cancer causing. It's kind of weird, but so don't do it inside. Okay. I oh. Literally, uh, it sounded like you were so averse to the sun that you wore sunscreen inside for a second. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He has very fair skin. Yeah, yeah. No, I just I, I wear it inside. I'll, if I put it on outside, even with the spray, you know, you sweat it off or you get sure. in the water, it's just gone instantly. So. Uh, I do want to recognize uh, something that Learn sent uh, to the group this morning. Uh, I didn't. I didn't know this was going on. The it voting for America's best restroom. Yes. Oh. I get updates, and uh, they narrowed it down to ten. Yeah, none country. in the St. Louis area. You know who won it before was the uh, Fountain on Locust won it one year. Oh, America's best restroom. America's best restroom, and and they've changed ownership in the last couple of years. But uh, the Fountain on Locust, and it's still a great restroom, but it's just different ownership. I don't think I've ever been there. It's a great place to have pick, dill pickle soup. In the restroom? Not in the rest, but, I mean, you could, I guess, but don't. Uh, but the it's real artsy in there and, and beautiful. Where so, is this? Uh, Fountain on Fountain Locust. Fountain on Locust. Oh, yeah. On Locust Street, downtown. Oh, I think, I, okay, I, I've, I've eaten there. I don't remember the I remember restroom the, being remarkable. They have the cutest, the itty bitty right little the... ice cream cone. It is the small, world's smallest ice cream cone. It's delicious. <laughs> I guess, I, I literally... Remember the bathroom at Fountains on Locust and underwhelmed. I don't think it was crazily. I don't remember, and I would know. I paid America's best restroom. Well, here's what they say: 
Uh, using a public restroom isn't usually thought of as an, enjoy, uh, as an enjoyable experience. But if you're in an airport, theme park, restaurant, or highway rest stop and nature calls, you'd like to know there is a clean, comfortable, and efficient restroom to use. Luckily, there are some great public restrooms, but only one will be crowned America's best restroom mm -hmm. of 2023. Voting is now open at bestrestroom.com. Uh, last year's winner was, yeah, was the Tampa International Airport bathroom. Dang. Uh, I don't know. Is that still an airport bathroom? An airport yeah. bathroom. How cool is that? Is that the Locust bathroom? I think so. From the fountain. Yeah. On Locust. Looks like it. Uh, oh, that is a, that is nice. That's I mean, cool. That's a nice bathroom. Joy Gridnick, who used to own the fountain on Locust, she hand painted that whole place. So wow. anything you see in there is hand painted by the was the previous owner. That's awesome. Mm. Yeah, that's super cool. Bestrestroom.com if you want to vote. You can also nominate if you want. I mean, they do have, I think, one, two, three, four. They have ten finalists, but I think you can throw some some nominations of your own in there. I think there's two that should definitely be on this list, and one is Wally's because it's spotless, and the other one is Have you ever gone into any Bass Pro bathroom? Mm -mm. Those things are boy the some of the coolest. Are are, are there are, heads in there? What's it's like this beautiful heads? artwork everywhere and deer heads. Or yeah, deer they heads. got cool stuff like that, you know, or no, it's more wood and all yeah. that, but it's it's really well done. There's a couple uh, airport bathrooms that are amazing. This one here, that they, Where is that that they have, this the is the uh, Washington, the new Washington Dulles one. This one is incredible, and honestly, wow, it kind of really it, nice. it kind of reminds you of the Wally's bathroom. That it's got does the same, look like the Wally's. It's got the same structure, and there's a I, I don't remember which airport. I think it's in the South, might be Dallas or something that redid theirs just like this, and it is it is remarkable. It's I worth would, remarking. You know what? I would like to nominate the Wally's and Fenton. Okay. For their restroom, their men's room. Yeah. I can't speak to the women's room, mm. but the men's room is... Immaculate. Gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Sorry, not, not Dulles. This is BWI. That looks like Denver's airport, too. They just updated their restrooms to look very similar really? to what you're looking at there. Yeah. Man, this look at some awesome. of these, dude. Look at the Nashville one. What the heck is that? This looks like Barbie or something. Well, I'm just saying... Um, Whoa. Druzy and important. Dar. That is, I believe, is that a restaurant? I don't know, but it's like the lighting and everything, it's all pink. So I'm assuming that's all white finish with pink lighting, and it makes it look wild. There's a woman oh, I it's follow a, it's a hotel. on TikTok, and I she came up in my algorithm randomly, but it, she goes, come take a crap with me, only she uses the bleeped <laughs> word, come take a crap with me, and, and she goes to all these different restrooms, and you don't see her like poo or anything, but she does rank all of the restrooms that she goes to. It is super interesting, because this woman goes out of her way to... Uh, you know, do the deed in restrooms yes. all over America. Mm. Okay, so here's here's one of the finalists that doesn't deserve to be here, if you ask me. Uh, this is... That's, that's the El Rio in San Francisco. Okay, yeah, cool. and, and I think it's awesome looking, but as far as best... I mean, all this is is cool tile and paint. Um, now, I think what makes it stand out a little bit is they got a couple stalls here, but the main stall has a black toilet, which is cool. Yeah, they say it evokes a futuristic Tokyo-bound subway. Mm. Mm. The they feature toilet. brightly colored and patterned tile and paint and backlit mirrors. I feel like everybody's parents' friends had a black toilet in the 80s. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's a venue. But how can you tell if it's clean? There's a venue. Yeah, that's the thing. There's a venue in D.C. where the dressing room in the in the headliner's bathroom has a black toilet. It's like famous. All, all bands are like, oh, my God, did you get to play there? The black toilet. Yes, yeah, the 930 Club. And you're like, oh, they got a black toilet. And every time a band goes in there for the first time, you headline. You go, man, this is so cool. I'm going to go home and get a black toilet. And by the end of the night... After the room has been used for a while, you go, maybe the black toilet isn't Not such a great, a great idea. idea. I think the Creepy Crawl, the original Creepy Crawl, had a black toilet. Hey, do you really? remember the toilet seats that used to be... Uh, Foam? Cushion? Cushion. Oh, yeah. Gross. Grandma's, grandma's house. Those were gross. Gross. The cracks That's on them? Right. Oh, yeah, and the, and the plastic would crack. Sit down, you hear... <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I hated those. <laughs> you hear the air going out of it oh, when your ass those. hits it. Yeah. Yeah, it was like a it was like a vinyl cover on the on foam. Ugh. Leather oh. seat, man. Blech. And then also they put the the little rug on the the top. Yeah. Little oh. thing to close like the it. The shag carpet. Yeah. The shag carpet. Gross. The toilet cover. Anybody that has carpeted restrooms still in 2023? I get told out you. I, we had a, we we moved into a house. Uh, right. Doherty Ferry and Big Bend. We rented a house over there that had. Carpeted bathroom. Oh my gosh! It was so disgusting. They did also have my grandma also had uh, I don't know what you would call them, but they were like seashell little traction things they put in the bottom of the tub. They were like little stickers that go. Oh on the yeah, bottom the of the non tub. so you don't slip. Yeah, 
The no slip stickers. Yeah, the anti. You'd be staring at the no slip seashells where you heard the air come out of the foam toilet seat. Fuchsia. <laughs> it's the best. Like a pink toilet seat. Yeah, do you guys remember have the, uh, I don't know, when you were growing up, did you have the, it was the shower mat that had the little suction cups at the bottom? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, you know, yeah. The no slip. Yep, yep, yep. My parents still have that, I believe. Yeah, we put that in when my mom visits. There was oh, a- you do? Yeah, so your your nice. tub is not like textured or something? or No, it's an old school, just good old iron tub. That thing is uh, a little slick at times, but <coughs> yeah, I throw it in when she gets there. Otherwise, it just looks so yeah, I don't know. In my mind, this is gross. I just don't like <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, it was a little, su- like, little uh, octopus suction cups at the bottom. Yeah. yeah. There was also a period of, like, the toilets were, like, a yellowish-green color. That there was, was like, a, cool a 70s, early 80s, where the toilets were not not just black, but they came in, like... Pastels. Pastel All that colors, pastel almost. Stuff. And my grandma also had, and I don't know when this was big, but there was an era where the sink... Was like in the shape of a shell, like a seashell. Do you oh, know yes. what I mean? Oh, I do know. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You're rich like if you have two of those. Like, yeah. so it was almost on like a pedestal. Yeah, or or, it was or a cabinet or a the, cabinet. But the actual sink, like, had the ridges. Yeah, on, like okay. a seashell. Yep. those are pretty cool. And have you ever seen the the nice? I mean, this is proves you're rich if you have this. But it's the one that's kind of clear and has the fish and little seashell toilet seat. Oh yeah, like the that bowl top. Legit. I don't remember basin. That. I think they're called basin sinks, where the sink actually like sits. It looks like a bowl on top of mm-hmm. the. Thing. Oh no! Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Those were big like twenty years ago. I feel like everybody that was the modern. Yeah, but fancy thing bathrooms get. now they they have those again. Those, the basin sinks. Oh yeah. Man, and it was guaranteed to leak. <clears throat> it was yeah. interesting when all those pastel things were everywhere in the seventies, sixties, and seventies because it was like the most tired version of whatever color. Like oh look, there's an exhausted yellow. Like, oh, there's an exhausted green. Like, they, they weren't even, like, pastel. They were almost, like, just, uh, give me the dullest green you can. Like, mm. it's almost just completely given up and become transparent. It w- You know, it seemed like it was the leftover paint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like, what? It's leftover. <laughs> pastel? Yeah. Yeah, yeah kind of. Those, pa- yeah, those pastel, tired, tired colors. Some hey, of these bathrooms are dope. Look at this. It was like the paint they sprayed peeps down with in Easter. Yeah. And they're like, we got a bunch of peeps paint left over. Yeah, that's look good in the bathroom. Tell your grandma it looks cool. <laughs> Dude, look at this one. They, they got all these like uh, foliage and different things hanging from the uh, ceiling. It's like taking a poop in the forest. Yeah, yeah. It's very Jumanji. <laughs> it's like taking a poop in, a, like in the that. rainforest. <laughs> that's how I wish my bathrooms at home looked. It's very cool. Venice Cafe here in town has some cool oh, yeah. bathrooms. I haven't been there in years. Dude, d- go <laughs> drop some acid and go to Venice because... Uh, they got over yeah, by the whole brewery, place right? is a yeah. trip, but the bathrooms are cool, man. I haven't been in I mean, I'm not saying they're the cleanest. a long time. Uh, yeah, if you guys know of a, of a bathroom in the area that should be nominated, let us know. Yeah, there's a nomination page on this page. I just tweeted out the link, so if people yeah, let us, I want, I want to, I want to know. Oh, now look at this one. Because if nature calls, I'm in the area. I want to know. Here's the thing, too. I think something that may not be taking into account that needs to be is the location of the bathroom in regards to traffic and the building. Because that's what I remember about. The fountains on Locust. The bathrooms are right off, like the hostess stand, and right by the bar, heavy traffic area, where you're like, ah, I can't sneak away. Yeah. If I got if you gotta go, I like it to be at the end of a long corridor, away from all the action. Mm. You don't want to hear anybody. You can sne- well, and you can sneak in and sneak out. Yeah. yeah. Nobody knows where you went. And this is really where I miss Jeff because Jeff knew. Every great bathroom in the area. Aww. You know, Jeff, who had, you know, who had Crohn's, right. would have to use the bathrooms quite often, and he had his favorites. Uh, sure. First of all, he never used a bathroom. He had Crohn's meetings. Oh yeah, he would say, I, had a, "I have a Crohn's meeting." <laughs> <laughs> so he and he would know the best gas station bathrooms. Yes. They'd be like, oh yeah, the Circle K up on uh, Zumble. He goes, uh, that one. That's a great bathroom. Or uh, you know, the uh, the on the run in Eureka. That's great. Third stall. Don't he, use it. I wish he could have left that for me. I like because I often want to know where to go, and I want to be able to have a plan. And I do have my, I have a plan of action. Like the places I go to regularly around the city. Like if nature calls and things are happening, I want to make sure I go to those bathrooms. And actually, when we were at Captain Jim's uh, for the fourth, you know, mm-hmm. I needed to go, and I did not want to use the porta potty that was at Captain Jim's. Go to the dirt cheap. 
I went down the road to whatever that next gas station was. The dirt cheap doesn't have a public restroom. So I went down the road and that there were two different uh, gas stations and one of them looks a little bit more elite than the other. And I went into that one and I asked them, I'm like, hey, can I use your restroom? And it was the cleanest side of the road gas station bathroom really? I'd ever seen. Nice. And I actually complimented the man behind the counter. I was like, that was you awesome. You know what would help them out? What? If you went to Yelp and actually put yeah. that in a Yelp review, I, yeah, give, him five, yeah, give him five stars I and will. just focus on the bathroom. I need to remember which I think gas that's station important. it was. Yeah. Did you and say that bathroom was clean? It, or Well, it yes, it was, and it remained clean oh, okay, after okay. I was done. Yes, good clarification. Did that uh, right around 2000, <laughs> 2001, we did a, did a lot of traveling, and, and band wise, we didn't care so much about the toilets because that was kind of like never great, but it was always about the sink and getting out. Like, how, how clean could you feel when you were leaving? And uh, I remember on the way to Springfield, we used to play Springfield a lot. There was a rest stop that was built that had the touchless sinks. And that was the first time I'd ever experienced that, guys. It was like the year 2000. Oh, yeah. Well, and it was the uh, hands under the And you sensors. put it under, and it, like, rinses. And then you keep them under there, and it gives you the soap. And then you keep them under there, and it rinses. And then you keep them under there, and it dries it. And, dude, we used to go out of, the, uh, go out of our way to go wash Just our hands. Because <laughs> hey. I don't know it's the like, toilets. It's uh, like, you know, you're using the bathroom on the uh, Starship Enterprise. Yeah, it was awesome. So futuristic. <laughs> yeah, man. Being Next thing band. you know, you're going to walk in front of a door. It's just going to open by itself. Holy Whoa. cow. <laughs> Holy Being cow. in a band Holy is nasty. Holy cow, we have that. It's nice to wash up. Yeah, so go check out that list if you want. Uh, bestrestroom.com. Uh, nominate an area restroom if you want. I think as, as the show here, I think we're putting in a nomination for Wally's and Fenton. Yes, we are. And if you haven't stopped by there, I would recommend it. It's a, And I do mean this genuinely. A, if you want a unique date night experience. Go to the bathroom at Wally's. Go to the, ba right. <laughs> go to the bathroom at Wally's. No, just go to Wally's and, and go to the bathroom. But get your dinner and your dessert and your beers or whatever you get. It's fun. Uh, somebody on the chat saying that you can't... Uh... Uh, you can't submit any. Yeah, you can for 2024. This, the, okay. the, these are the final. Oh, okay. 2023, so, okay. But it so says, nominate for the 2024 contest. Yeah, okay. Nominate a restroom for the 24 contest. Here's the nomination page. It's right under the vote now. Oh, okay. So, so the 2023, okay, so the finalists are locked in. 2024. Right. Well, we're focusing on 2024, guys. Okay. 2024, fine. Wally's, 2024 is going to be your year. What do you get if you win? Um, like $2,500. $2, bucks, yeah. For a bathroom upgrade? Just to have well, money, I, I guess. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think it's more about the glory. Yes. And you get a plaque. I remember uh, Fountain on Locust, they had, like, you go to the bathroom and it had, like, best one of the best bathrooms in America. Oh, I, yeah. and that would make a difference for me. A, a plaque yeah. and a um, you, you get to, you get put in the Hall of Fame list of this. And there's press releases that go out. So, I mean, it's good. It's good. It's, it's, it's good, good for the press. Business. It's yeah. good press. I do have to say, I do like the bathrooms here at Hubbard. Yes. We've discussed this before. The bathrooms here at Hubbard with the yeah, with Full the length. ceiling to floor door. Mm -hmm. Great. Big fan. Big fan. Yeah. I appreciate it. And I very much appreciate that there's uh, the radios in there because I don't have to yeah. hear so-and-so. Grunting. Mm -hmm. Grunting or. Grunting or and pushing. Or moving Yuck. paper. Yuck. <laughs> Dude, it's the worst. And, that, that, and, and that's my only gripe. <laughs> that's my only gripe with these bathrooms is every time we go in, one of the sports guys has gone in there and put it on the sports channel, which is never music. And like, you know, now now there's there's gaps in between where people are talking. And uh, I just I just want some Green Day or something. So no, I don't I just, have I don't to hear this guy talk, next to me. You know, hearing about the Cardinals <laughs> lose makes me go to the bathroom easier. <laughs> just makes everything flow out better. Does it? I'm just saying. Hey, nice laxative. I'm just I'm just saying. All right, so it's Friday. Uh, just some kind of leftover stuff that I meant to talk about this week but didn't get to. Um, this uh, doorbell cam video has gone viral, um, and it's, it's pretty sweet. It shows a young man and a woman walking to the front door at night. The woman bends down to the camera and apologizes to her mom for being drunk. And what follows next, did you see this? I did, yeah. What follows next is why this clip is so popular. Have you ever had to dump somebody on their front like front stoop because they were so hammered. <laughs> I've been the person that's been dumped. Oh, you have. Oh yes. Oh yeah. I've been the one that is like taken home, and I have great friends. I've never been taken home and dumped at home. I've done the dumping of somebody at home. I've done it in hotel rooms with uh, a lot of people. Mm. 
taking them back and going, here you go. After a wedding, for sure. <laughs> lay, lay down. Okay. You going to be all right? I, yeah, I, <laughs> See you I've, later. I've been taken to a hotel room and put to sleep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's that's having a lot. I've, I've been in tucked bushes. in. <laughs> Get the shoes off, Lauren. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like didn't quite make it home. I've slept in the bushes before. Oh, you have. <clears throat> Where I just like so, losing your balance, drunk, you know, just couldn't quite make it to the door. <laughs> Fell into the bushes and was like, "This mulch ain't so bad." Yeah, when I lived in South City, I uh, the guy across the street was a notorious drunk, and uh, he'd walk home from the bar and you'd see him walk sideways. And yeah, there was a night or two he slept in his bushes. I watched. <laughs> I watched him. Stumble across his front lawn, not make it to the stairs, and sleep in the and sleep in the uh, in the bushes. <laughs> but I've had to I've had to with the help of somebody else do the fireman carry to the front stairs, up the stairs, and just dump them in front of the door. But in this video, so a guy and a woman walk up to the door. Of course, got the ring doorbell. Mm-hmm. Woman bends down, apologizes to her mom for being drunk. And once she's safe inside, and this is the pretty sweet part that the, that everybody's like, oh, good on this guy. Yeah. Um, the guy looks into the camera and says, hi, my name is Ronnie. I'm sober. I drove her home. My girlfriend's in the car. And then he just leaves. Listen to this. You got keys in there. Hey, mommy. Mommy, I'm so sorry. <laughs> hey, wait. Hi, my name is Ronnie. I am sober. I drove her home. My girlfriend's in the car. <laughs> and then he leaves. Why? I applaud that. That's awesome. Smart, smart guy. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, this is the friend smart. everybody should have, is a Ronnie. Yeah, everybody yeah. needs a Ronnie. Mm-hmm. Everybody needs a Ronnie. Guy. He's a thinker. He's yeah, because mom's going to get up and see that ring doorbell, and she's going to go, who's Ronnie? Dang it, Amanda, again. You know, but luckily Ronnie... Ronnie's there. I love I love her. She's like, Mommy, I'm sorry. Like, she's so hammered. I, it looks like she was holding a bottle of booze, too. <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> she's, like, wrapped up in her jacket or something, or his jacket. Offering. I'm sorry. Here you go. And, you know, what? How, the wherewithal of that kid to be co- cognizant of, like, these times that we're living in where he's like, hey, I'm sober. My name is Ronnie. My girlfriend is in the car. Like, he's trying to make sure he's checking all the boxes of, like, I'm not a creeper. Yeah. yeah. I didn't hurt your daughter. Like, I'm just trying to make sure she got home. Well, it's not only the appearance of it, too. It's also he's backing up whatever story she says. Like, no, you know, this guy took me home. I didn't drive. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I was dropped off by a sober guy. Like, you know, I hate to like even say it. If she goes, what happened to me last night? And she has another story. And now he's got something on camera to go, hey. Hmm. Yeah. Everything's, everything's all good here. Yeah, that's what yeah. I mean. Like, that's the times we're living in where everything's have all to good here. Over explain. My girlfriend's in the car. She got home safe. Yeah. Oh. You know what I'm saying, Rafe? Got to cover all your bases now. I do. I probably would go the extra mile and be like, you're coming up here with me. <laughs> I'd make the girlfriend come. The old girlfriend in the car stories. Oh, you yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. It's a shaky ground. Yeah, yeah you're right. I'd be like, Tina. Grab an arm. <laughs> We're going up together. Uh huh. You've been dumped. Oh yeah. On your front porch. Yeah, I've been taken home and like walked up and mm. make sure you, like friends just wanting to make sure I'm in the house. Like, I don't know the one or two times I've done it, I was like, here, I, you, I'm bringing it to the front door, and you're on your own. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've never been. Because by that time, I'm so pissed off that they're <laughs> so hammered, I got to carry them in. Yeah. Yeah. Or help to carry them in. Listen. You're in your property line. You're good. You're good. You're fine. I've never been carried. I've been like walked up and, you know, make sure the door was locked afterwards yeah. type of thing. Well, we, uh, so our house in South City, I think Moon, you know the story. I, I may have told this on the air before. Um, we moved out of the house in uh, 2011 and we had renters in there. And uh, the renters that had been there had been there for maybe two months and there was a wedding And they were with a cousin, and the cousin got so drunk that they couldn't take him out of the car. So they left him in the car sleeping Mm -hmm. while they went into the house, the house that I own. Again, they've been there for two months, didn't really know the neighbors. I guess the cousin woke up Mm -hmm. in the middle of the night, got out of the car. All those houses look the same. Right. All those houses look the same. Those, you know, South City brick row houses. Yeah. They all look the same. Guy gets out of the car, gets confused, mm-hmm. tries to get in 
the wrong house. Uh. Tries to get in the wrong house, start, tries to open up the door, has to go to the bathroom, takes a dump on the porch. No. <laughs> That's a good spot for him. Takes a dump on the porch and I think goes back to the car to sleep it off. I get a call. <laughs> I get a call saying the people you have living in the house you own, what the hell's going on over there? Right. Somebody took a dump on my porch. <laughs> like like steaming coil on my on my on my porch. <laughs> I get a call at the radio station. That was a Saturday. This I got a call on Monday. I think they first called like the studio line right. to like get in touch with me. <laughs> Where is he? Yeah. <laughs> to complain about the and I go, oh my god, I'm so sorry. They passed all the background checks. I I I don't know. Right. And I'm thinking, what excuse could there be for this to happen? And they told me, I go, oh, that's a good excuse. That's a good excuse. That's a good excuse. That's a viable excuse. That's a good excuse. <laughs> well, at least you owe this family next door a power washing. For you sure. You got a power wash there. Yeah. <sighs> You got to power wash at least the porch. You owe him that. I have a story about my mom. She probably won't appreciate me telling her, telling everybody this, but um, <laughs> my mom was single. Uh, it was her brother's wedding. We were in Chicago. You know, what, a huge Italian wedding at one of those big, ritzy hotels in Chicago. Like, mm -hmm. every expense was just through the roof. And my mom uh, got hammered drunk. It's her littlest brother's wedding, who she loves so much. And I'm, she's a single mom at this point. I'm probably like nine years old, eight years old. We are bridesmaids in the wedding, okay? So my mom is a bridesmaid. I'm a junior bridesmaid. We all have these big purple gowns on. I got a bouffant hairdo. It's a whole thing. Our whole family is there. And my mom's having a great time partying. Uh, at some point during the night, she kind of just parties her way out of, who knows where mom is at this point. Comes back. My aunt had taken me to her hotel room to sleep with my aunt and my uncle and my cousins because my mom couldn't be found. Yeah. Um, oh, Jill was gone. Jill was gone. <laughs> somebody, so, somebody, so I was all cared for and everything was fine. Somebody had taken my mom because she was so hammered back to her room and let her sleep it off. So she fell asleep, full gown, yeah. shoes, everything. Woke up. Her nine-year-old daughter is nowhere to be found oh. in this huge Chicago hotel. My mom is panicking calls luckily one of her first calls was her sister and Jean was like yeah I have your kid everything is fine but what was amazing and this was like early 90s the photos come back you know how you do the the uh, wedding photos oh yeah <laughs> like so so every every table had a um no, this was a photographer. Oh, okay. Or every table had a, a disposable camera. Yeah. This was the 90s where you took like staged photos of the wedding party. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and you wouldn't see them developed for many weeks because it wasn't digital times yet. The photos come back of my mom and I, <laughs> mother, daughter, bridesmaids photo, poised, like lighting, all the stuff. My mom is so hammer <laughs> drunk in this photo. <laughs> And it's like the only, it's the last evidence that we had of she and I being together that night was this mm. photo that we took. Her mouth is open. Her eyes are like And that's the last shot. time we saw Jill. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. But so, like, that was the first time I ever knew my mom being carried to, or sent away to a room. Yeah. Somebody got her where she needed to be and somebody took care of me. But God, that's amazing. you just triggered that memory with uh, telling these stories. The band lived in, the, in Orange County for a while. In Orange County, like, you don't. You know, shut the doors or windows sometimes. You know, the weather's pretty consistent. And yeah. we were, like, in this, like, super broke, poor house, right? And uh, <coughs> all the houses, kind of like you're saying, all the houses kind of look the same, especially if you're drunk or if it's nighttime. And there were two instances that I can remember where people would just fall into the doors. It was like a screen door. And I slept on the couch because everybody was just filling right. up the bedrooms. Yeah, you and fall remember, through. Yeah, you fall, the screen, at, fall through the screen at door. At night, somebody pushed through and came through and just ended up on the floor. Halfway outside, halfway inside. Yeah, this person was on the on in the living room, and I was wrapped in a sheet on a leather couch so I wouldn't stick to the leather. And uh, like we're, we're broke here, and like you know, uh, I've been here for for fewer days, months than than some of the guys. So this guy is laying on on the floor, and I assume this is somebody somebody knows. He's supposed to be here, right? So I let it go. And then in the morning when I woke up, he was gone. And somebody was like, "Hey, did, did somebody come in? I saw somebody walking out. It was that guy again. It was one of the neighbors." There's a couple of neighbors that had some issues, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah. And uh, I think that's what happened. And another one happened in the middle of the day. Oh, my goodness. A gal came in and went through the screen. 
and was sitting in the in the living room. Somebody came in and was like, who, who are you? <laughs> and half of us didn't know that yeah. we, somebody didn't know her. Every, right. every once in a while, you know, we'll read a story about that happening. That happened to Robert Downey Jr. Remember, his rock bottom was he got yeah. so drunk that he wound up in a neighbor's house yeah. in bed with, like, the kid because wow. he didn't know... Where it he was. was. Somebody, yeah, he didn't know where he was. He thought it was his house. And maybe, I don't know if the floor plans were the same. You know, you you you, you <laughs> instinctually follow a certain pattern. Like, so if you were hammered at home. Yeah. Like, just blind drunk, you would still know how to get to your bathroom, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's, that's in you. That's, you get, you know, you get up at a certain amount of steps. Yep. To the bathroom. You make a left, there's a the toilet. Yeah, it's first and second nature. First and second nature. Thanks, Scott. Uh, yeah, I think that's what happened with Robert Downey Jr. Just fell, you know, whatever room it was, wow. thought it was his room, fell asleep. Luckily, you know, the homeowner didn't kill him. <clears throat> I've had friends do that in, like, apartment buildings, condo, you know, like where it is literally. The same. Everything looks the same. Yeah. Just door unlocked, pass out on someone else's couch. Several times. <laughs> no, listen. But everybody needs a Ronnie, so hey, kudos to Ronnie yeah, for, Ronnie. Yeah, Ronnie. Yeah, nice work. for uh, getting this girl home safe and explaining to mom that everything's all good. Uh, another thing that was making the rounds, and this is uh, from an email. I've uh, been invited to a baby shower. Okay, fine. But this girl already had a baby shower for her first kid, which I attended and gave a very expensive gift and uh, sat and faked a smile for three hours while she opened a pile of endless gifts. I thought you wanted a baby shower once. I don't know the rules on these things. If you have a baby shower, it's one baby shower, right? Uh, no, I think it's for every kid, right? No, there's a sprinkle. You have like the the first kid gets the big baby shower because then you're, people assume that if you're having multiple kids, you're keeping some of the things from the first baby. So then you have what's called a sprinkle, which is essentially a smaller version, more intimate version of a baby shower. Yeah, the controversy here is this person's like, is this person double dipping? Mm. I think if you're having a, you know, if you, like your first kid's a boy, second kid's a girl... You, you know, there's know. different things. Yeah, or if you don't know, I guess. Like, I don't know the rules with I don't know I didn't know that. Either. I thought you just got one every time. No, yeah. I, I think it's assumed that you have one big one, and then you have, and I could be wrong, but that's that's been my experience with my girlfriends who have had ba multiple babies, is the big shower for the, the big first shower one. The big shower for the first one, and that's when you get, you know, yeah. the, the baby swings and all those uh, gadgets right. that you never use. Exactly. And you then put on sprinkle. your baby registry the most expensive <laughs> things and all these gadgets, which... I just I just put in. Do you have a baby shower for a second baby? And the giant answer on Google is yes. Hmm. There are many valid reasons to have baby showers for second and subsequent pregnancies. One reason is having been through babyhood once already. You're wise enough to know what you really won't uh, use, like the wipe warmer. Uh, yeah, like my that second baby, stuff. so I'm having a second shower. Blah 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 blah. Okay, all right. Well, I guess this is a non-issue then. Hey, by the way, speaking of babies, congrats to John Hewlett. Oh yeah, I read that. Uh, he, new grandpa. He's a grandpa. He has a grandson. Caleb John is the baby's name. CJ. So yeah. So when awesome. John was here, what two weeks ago? Mm -hmm. I remember he was uh, bragging about going out to to Phoenix. Oh, so he's in Phoenix. No, no, no he was in Phoenix, yeah, and he came back, um, and then he's going back out. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah, it's really hot. So hot. Uh, this says, um, so it is now more acceptable to have a baby a baby shower for a second or even third child, especially if they're different genders, but the etiquette is typically only have it for close family. So you know, it's not oh, one of those like, big blow-ups. Yeah, 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 it's not a big okay. It's more of a family shower. So that, that actually kind of makes more sense. Okay. All right. Uh, we're not going to solve world peace today. It's Friday, but uh, that doesn't mean we can't debate a slightly smaller problem. Uh, like, is it iced tea or iced tea? Go. Ooh, iced tea. Are you no, sure? I say, wait, hang on. I'll have an iced tea. I say iced tea. It's iced tea, but I say iced tea. Well, it's still ice, right? So is it iced tea or iced tea? It's present tea. So it's it's present ice. 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 Ice tea. Uh, Moon, what do you say? Iced tea. Iced tea. Ice. Iced tea. I say iced tea. Iced tea. Hey, I, yeah, uh, unsweetened iced tea. Ice. Iced tea. Yeah, I, say, I guess I say iced tea, which I'm embarrassed. That feels dumb. <laughs> so you say iced or ice? I think I say it so quickly that I say iced tea, iced tea. which iced makes tea. me yeah. feel bad that I've been <laughs> blowing it this whole time. Because <laughs> it's You're iced among tea. Friends. Don't blow it. You're it's iced tea. I say it with a D. Iced. Say it in a sentence. Like, I, I'm, I'm your waitress. 
Oh, <clears throat> sir, what would you like to have as a beverage? Can I get an unsweet iced tea? Mm. Ice but it sounds tea. like you say iced tea. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do a, uh, like regular, a nice tea. regular beef and cheddar meal, uh, seasoning on the fries, and an unsweet and iced tea. Iced tea. Ice. Yeah, yeah. Ice. Yeah. Damn, I, I dropped Scott, the Scott, ice. Wow. And now that Moon says that, I bet it does come out iced tea. A, uh, a, iced a, tea. A strangely comprehensive poll asked more than uh, 10,000 Americans, and uh, 49% say iced tea. 20% ice, and 27%, yeah, both are cool. In my brain, I'm saying iced, so that's what counts. This seems like it'd be a regional thing, but if you break it down by the different areas of the country, uh, there aren't really any noticeable uh, spikes. However, if you break it down by age, the younger adults are much more likely to spell it uh, ice. Oh, yeah. If I were to spell it, it would be iced tea every single time. I'll be I, honest. I don't I think I say that. ice that much. I think well, I usually say, do you have unsweet tea? Uns yeah. Unsweet tea? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's implied. The ice is implied. Uns unsweet tea. Yeah, but if you go to a like a barista, you got Is that you're gonna get a hot tea? Then I don't get tea at barista. Well, real quick, I was just gonna say. I think I say iced coffee. Like I will iced very coffee. much pronounce yeah. the iced d. Coffee. So what's it. correct? Iced. Iced. The re yeah, neither are wrong according to grammar websites. But uh, the original term was iced tea. But uh, this shift has happened before. So what is it? Ice cream or iced cream? That's ice cream. Ice cream. Why wouldn't it? Why because wouldn't it, it be iced cream? Uh, that's what you're doing. That's not my. That, that's, because the cream is frozen. Yeah, so it should made, be ice, ice, but it is actual ice. Uh, technically, if you ask for iced tea, you should get little cubes of frozen uh, frozen tea. Mm -hmm. Because it is tea that has been frozen. That would be iced tea. Mm -hmm. Iced tea has had ice added to but it. But just so you know, the history of ice cream and. Mm -hmm. Ice water uh -huh. originally were iced cream and iced water. Mm. Really? Wow. So we shifted to ice cream and ice water. Well, I'm not going to argue with the forefathers of... Uh, Nobody ice, says iced cream, ice cream anymore. Iced cream. These idiots. <laughs> <laughs> sure, let's, uh, let's probe this today. <laughs> All right, I got some, I got some other um, food wars topics. Uh, what are some foods you find disgusting but everybody else loves? That I find disgusting. What, what are everybody foods? else loves. What or? are some foods you find disgusting, but everybody else loves? Mayo for me, hate oh. it. Mm. Hate it. That's so so trendy to hate that though. Now I'm not saying you. I'm just saying Jesus, I, I know. Moon, come, you know that I'm right. <laughs> All the people with the mayo hate. Like, okay, maybe you're, you're not putting it on things, but like, come on, you hate mayo. I believe it from you. You've been saying this for years. For years. But there is a. I'm trend. an OG there's mayo a, hater. Come on, man. There's like a trend. You I'm not what? wrong. Do you hate the mayo because of its thickness? Because I, I I like mayo, but if it's too thick, I get very It's got disgusted. a very weird tang to it. Mm. Mm. Yeah. If I'm not going to follow you there, but I I don't like the thin... Like, it's a, got, a thin layer on a sandwich is quite it's nice. It's got a little something that that, that kind of hits you in the back of the tongue. That I go, ooh, it's off, that's off -putting. <laughs> I think, you know, my hillbilly roots and stuff, whenever you're poor, mayonnaise is one of the great treats because you get the... Whenever you're a kid, the first sandwich you really make is mayonnaise, and you throw some cheese on it. Yes. And you put it in a microwave. You're like, yeah. Oh, no mayo. Like mayo, mayo. Mm. Are you uh, brand loyal? I like Duke's. Ooh. Duke's mayo is pretty good. Hell no. Uh, but I'm not. I just like mayo. I'm not a huge fan. Uh, white trash mayo is Miracle Whip, which is what we had growing. I don't know if it was cheaper. I'll bet you there is really no price difference. You think? So why would Miracle Whip be the thing? And why would know. you say that's, that's you know, Hoosier? I don't know. Hoosier I just feel like it was a more Hoosier. Because it's like Cheese Whiz. <laughs> it's not cheese. Miracle Whip's not mayo. It's something else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, like, why not just call it mayo? Don't they call it salad dressing? Yeah, it's yeah, called yeah, salad, it's salad dressing. dressing. <laughs> I ain't dressing a salad in <laughs> Miracle Whip, <laughs> dog. You know what's a really good one is the Primal Kitchen one. It's you, made oh, with avocado. That is a good one. That might be why it's the white trash mayo is because it, it's multifunctional. <laughs> yeah, Instead yeah. of buying vinaigrette or like a ranch, you just like made like a little salad and then plopped little, some Miracle Whip in there. A little and dollop it of uh, Miracle Whip? Yeah. I'm kind of remembering having salads with it on it now, and it's Whoa. traumatic. How do you have your tuna salad then? Do I you... don't eat tuna salad. I don't like tuna in a can. Oh, no. <laughs> chicken salad? I, uh, I don't have chicken salad. Potato salad? Any kind of mayo-based... Hmm. Like, I don't like out, coleslaw dude. that's mayo-based. Right. Mayo-based so, potato salad? You want no, mustard-based? No egg salad? I just won't do potato salad. Ever? Oh, come on. I mean, if I don't yeah. like mayo, Please. that's a key ingredient. Well, they 
No, there's mustard-based potato there salad. There is. Bruh. Is that like a German potato salad? Uh, yeah, I don't know if possibly. it's German or not, but... Schnooks has it. You can mm-hmm. get a... A mayo- mustard... I don't think I've ever seen that. One. The, Schnooks has a mustard and a mayo-based potato salad, and both are equally delicious. I've never... I've never... Seen a mustard based. Is this regular like mustard? Salad. Speaking of, D- Dijon is the thing. Yeah, Dijon's really his kryptonite. He hates Dijon. Dijon. Oh man, I love a stone I love Dijon. ground mustard. Dijon. Mm. See, stone ground is different than Dijon. I know Dijon yeah, is yeah, a yeah, don't separate play. category. But I and, love and the, all mustard. Well, the reason that I hate it is because it's very often not disclosed. And I'll say, oh, you've got honey mustard on this turkey sandwich or whatever the hell and that's what it says on the menu mm-hmm. honey mustard and it comes and it's got Dijon like this is not what I ordered this is not what yeah, I so want it's this, like a higher quality honey mustard I this appreciate it. is a hidden this is a no no have you ever had horseradish mustard yeah not a fan of horseradish oh, oh I love my gosh yeah. dude not you want to clear your you are stuffed up for the day just put some horseradish yeah, that's, on the that's, sandwich that's fake Ooh. wasabi that's just that's just poor man's wasabi man not a fan it's love good it. no see I like the stone ground like brown yeah, mustard dude. Yes. Brown, and then I'll go yellow, I will. like the French's. Yeah, mustard's great. Mustard. mustard was an acquired thing for me. When I was a kid, it was like, oh, no, no, no. But now I love it on everything. Just don't sneak in Dijon without telling mm. All right, good to know. It's any you vinegar eggs, stuff, dude. Worth it. No, we had the discussion in the office the other day. I don't, I'm, yeah. I don't love hard-boiled eggs. Me neither. Wow. That's not what a deviled egg is. Right. I, I don't know much about so, deviled eggs because I just don't So much more. Bread. A deviled yeah, egg a deviled is, egg is, is the, the plate is... Uh, yeah, it's a hardball egg. <laughs> the it's base. A egg. <laughs> when I see people eat the them vessel too, for <laughs> consumption, but is the yolk is it? The hard-boiled yolk. It's been, it's been transformed. It into has a culinary mm-hmm. treat. Listen, I know you. you had you had a phase where you just ate deviled eggs. I did. Greg <laughs> Warren makes fun of me about it. <laughs> what is it? Like what? What is it? I was doing like? keto on the road, and I was on the road with Greg Warren, and we stopped at like a high V or somewhere, and we went through line, and he goes, all because like you go in the grocery store, some of the you're in a hotel room. So a lot of the prepackaged stuff, if I want something that's like low, or like keto, you know what I mean? Like no uh, carbs. I was like, they always have those platters of like deviled eggs in the store. And I bought one to put in my hotel fridge. And it was like a 16 deviled egg platter. And he's oh, like, what the hell you are you doing, man? Cash all those. So you're going to have a picnic in the lobby? What's going on? You got a family reunion to go to? And I was yeah. like, I'm just putting them in my fridge, man. They're going to be my breakfast when I wake up in the hotel. So, so deviled eggs would be you hard boil eggs, cut okay. them in half. Okay. You take the the yellow yeah, of the, them, which is usually the balls at this point. Yeah. Right? And then you smash those up and you mix those with whatever. You mix them with something else. You oh, yeah. mix the yellows with something else, like paprika and oh, like the, possibly. Okay. I, I mean, I've never made them before, like mustard. I don't know what they. Sometimes they put relish right. or all sorts of. All okay. Sorts so of, it's a hard boiled egg with ad- additional flavors. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and then you eat you. You could pipe like mm-hmm. the. The, the yellow back into the where the hole was. Put some bacon bits. On, I mean, I wouldn't, but mm. most do put bacon on. I, I understand the appeal. I get it. Sounds it, fun. I've never made them. I'm almost to that. Like, I'm an aunt, so I'm almost to my age. Like, probably when I'm 40, I'll start making deviled eggs for everybody because <laughs> you have that one Sounds like aunt, an old person thing. Yeah, it's like a, your cool aunt who, like, has been making them for her whole life, it seems, starts making them. At family gatherings, mm-hmm. like I'm almost there. When I turn 40, I'll be deviled eggs for every event. All right, this could be controversial. <laughs> What's the most overrated food out there? I think bacon is. I'm with you. Thank you. Really? I love I I love bacon. Like if there's a plate of bacon, I'm all about it. I like bacon on things, but this over, like this bacon worship, well, got it's, to the point. It's on everything. I know it was marketing. There's a lot of money. But people, spent. people bought into the. It became into a the bacon hype. You know, I'll, I'll have bacon. I'll just have a whole bacon on everything. That's how I am. I don't love <laughs> <Like>, bacon. <okay. laughs> That's how I am. But I know I'm coming at you with. I don't eat pigs. But My I'm not life even is not defined right by by right. bacon. You know, there yeah. remember there was a bacon earrings. That and was bacon air fresheners. Bread. Yeah, bacon <laughs> candle. Big, big bacon spent a lot of big. Big bacon spent big bucks. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, they did it. And people bought it hook, line, and sinker. Remember the bacon cheeseburger with Kate Upton? And it's like, you know, she's like biting into it. What was it? Hardee's? Yeah. yeah. Something like that, yeah. You know. It was Paris Hilton. I'm going to say, Paris though. Hilton. Yeah, yeah, Paris Hilton. I'm going to say, I think though, Kate Upton did something. You have like a high-quality one that's cooked just right. I love bacon. It's it, it's hard it's hard to have one and, and, and not go, wow. Because, I mean, it's one of the most vivid flavors. Yeah. I mean, it's so fatty and so whatever. It is so vivid that if you like it, you love it. Uh, and I, I, you, you know, know what I'm saying? I don't like undercooked bacon. Right. My bacon's got to be, 
I mean, I understand why there's a hook Just in the it. point of being burnt. Ugh. <laughs> you like undercooked? So I like my daughter likes no, I like properly cooked bacon. Yeah, but I which like is properly. Not, if it's so brittle that when you bite into no, it, no, I don't it like it that way. No, no, no. Hand, that's that's like, burnt. Sucks. This that's terrible burnt. That's bacon. Not burnt. That's burnt. No, you can you can brittle it without without burning. That's burnt. One no. day I'm gonna have my mom make you all bacon. I, the thing I miss about eating pigs the most is her bacon. My mom makes the best bacon, and I would love for you to judge the bacon one day because because I do genuinely miss it. I haven't had it in over twelve years, and uh, you're talking about like the fat on the bacon. It's got to have a little still on there. When it's got, when it's just like just a little bit, it's not totally it's firm. crunchy. It's not floppy. It's, it's firm, floppy. but it's not. Do you put bacon in the oven? It's not where it falls apart crunchy. Yeah, we yeah, make like it in, bacon the oven. in the oven. Yeah, yeah, we do it in the oven. The way to do it is, don't preheat the oven. Oh, oh put really? Put the bacon in a cold it, oven. Let yeah. it boil. Really? And let it come up to temperature. Do you ever make fancy bacon? Because I do some maple syrup and Caramelized? everything but the bagel seasoning on it. Yeah, oh, wow. see, I don't, I've, I've had like the maple bacon. I Just give me the regular stuff. It rules. Like, I don't need like, a candied. Candied? Oh, yeah, I don't need that. If, if that's so done right, good. too, that's I don't like need that. With, with some pepper, like big old oh, chunks yeah. of pepper. One of my favorite uh, <clears throat> Super Bowl party appetizers, man, is Little Smokies, Cheddar Little Smokies, wrapped in bacon, toothpick them, brown sugar, oven for 20 minutes. That's a treat. See, my wife will make a bacon wrap dates. Those yeah, are good too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. wonderful tool. They're a wonderful tool. Those are good too. Man. But I think bacon is overrated. What do you think? Give me another overrated food. Mm, overrated. Oh, shoot. I'll combine overrated with food I hate. That <laughs> I don't know that everyone loves it, but people that love it, I also think this is a very bacon take of like it's overhyped. People that love it love it too much. Is sauerkraut. Over it. I like, sour, I like sauerkraut. Yeah, I know. Sauerkraut. Of course I'm with you, Ray. I was going to say cabbage, but... People are just like... What does that mean? Of course I do. People that... It's just, you know, when you said you didn't like mayonnaise, I knew you loved sauerkraut. Yeah. That's what... There's it's no the weakness. opposite flavor right. profile. But you don't do that with corned beef? Whenever you have corned beef, you don't like... Corned beef, yeah. No. <gasps> I'll eat cabbage, but corn I don't like sauerkraut on it. I don't, it is a disgusting... The, it's it's fermented. Tastes, it's, yeah, it's fermented, fermented but it's it tastes loaded gross. With like probiotics and all that kind of and stuff. And that's another, while it's we're on for fermented, I'm so, another overhyped personality becomes your whole personality, kombucha. So tired of That's it. another mm. thing, gross. Oh, Get, I like kombucha, but it's man. not my personality. Oh, yeah, I people those. that love it, love it so much. Ah. Have you tried kombucha? <laughs> have, but have you tried kombucha? That's like, like you know what? I don't look at the ingredients. I'll say this, and I know you love it. I'm not. This is not a dig. It's all good. I'm talking about matcha. People that start drinking, like I watch the Kardashians. <laughs> Travis Barker and uh, Courtney Kardashian drink matcha in every episode. They have matcha cocktails. I don't even know what the hell that is. It's, 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 it's green tea. It's good. It's wonderful. But I, when it starts becoming your personality, like that's the one thing about Kardashians <laughs> yeah. I'm like annoyed with is when they ha they're <laughs> having their little weird wooden, uh, you know, spoon and they're drinking everything is green. I'm like, what the hell are we doing? Courtney, here? did you get your matcha enema today? Dude, for real. They <laughs> I'm, did I'm do so a clean. matcha enema. Like, I think she did do a matcha hole where you put your hoo-ha over top and it blows matcha steam up into your vaginal cavity. I, there's no other way to say it. That's amazing. Huh. <laughs> That's amazing. No. No. <laughs> no I'm not, funny I'm not you saying, saying I'm matcha because I've heard more people talk about matcha in the last couple of months. Like every, mm -hmm. it seems like every other friend oh, I have is like matcha. all into it. Hey, me too. As big if they've matcha. had it for I don't even know what the hell that, I don't even know what it is. Would you like to try some? I have some. But it's one of those where, some, within arm's length. <laughs> it's one of those trends where people pretend. But I'm not talking about it. It's one of those trends that people pretend they've had it forever, forever. and ever and ever, and they've been diehards for it. I'm like, no, you and never had that in my good. past. It's good. I'm not, and you do yeah. it right, buddy. You don't. You're not all matcha all day, every day. Nothing. You're no Travis care. Barker with it. But I'm just saying, when it becomes your cocktail, your tea. <laughs> oh, I'm I'm having it blended at Starbucks. Get out of here. Ninety percent of people also have never tasted what kombucha is. Most people right. don't even know what it is. Right. They just heard some. It's some kind of trendy drink. It's fermented tea. It's, it's basic, disgusting. Basically. It's, I like it. Oh, it's God. horrendous. I'm sorry to hear that. GT? Speaking it's of horrendous. Horrendous. And GT? And something that I think is completely overrated, and I think there's an addiction that's 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 coming into this thing, is any sort of energy drink, the the, the guarine, taurine oh, yeah. stuff. Like, that flavor is such a turnoff to me. I don't know what it is. It's it's it's, it's almost like my brain is, is like, going to some primal, like, ooh, this is poison. Stay away from it kind of thing. Because when I drink it, I just don't understand how anybody could like that actual flavor. And again, I think they're addicted to some caffeine and some other stuff, but sure. like, how is it that people are slamming these taurine drinks? Hey, another overhyped food. 
I don't know why you made me think of this. Maybe it's because it sounded like tuarine or guarine comes from the sea, but lobster. I really think I don't love it either. Overrated. I don't think I don't it's love bad. It I just think it's overhyped. Mm. I read something somewhere, and I don't know if this is true, that they used to, uh, because lobster was so plentiful, especially up in the... Was the rat of the sea? Yeah, that, that it was they, that was uh, prison food. It to prisoners. Yeah. It was poor people yeah, was and poor prison people food. food that got somehow got rebranded over they're time. They're bugs. It's their sea bugs. Yeah, like up in Maine is where it, they would feed yeah, prisoners. Yeah, they feed them to prisoners. Yeah, they were called the rats of the sea. Yeah, I don't like, like the 1800s. Either. They're definitely the roaches. I mean, the, the you know crabs, are, crabs are the spiders. You're eating a roach, sea, and uh, yeah, it's a giant roach. You're but, eating a bug when you eat a lobster. But and I'm crab okay too. with that. I don't. And I'm shrimp. okay. I think that's what's going to save humanity when we really screw Not everything shrimp. up. We're all going to be eating bugs because we're going to find out shrimp's oh, different. No, nope. a lot of bugs out there. A lot of protein. Cockroach of the sea, buddy. Sorry, no, nope, no big deal. I mean, oh, I'm shrimps. Them. Yeah, yeah. Delicious. Lobsters, Sh literally the cockroach of the sea. Yeah, shrimp. Shrimps are the shrimps the, are something the different. Mites. They're bottom. They're yeah, like they're, mites. They're oh. they're like a shrimp or bottom feeders. I think so. Well, so are the lobsters, man. No, I, I'm just saying, are, are shrimp bottom feeders? I think they are. Hey, I at least the lobsters have eat a poo, the poo vein, okay? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe they do. Here's my last take on kombucha, by the way. Poo vein. Bring it back. Bring it home, Daddy. Kombucha. It tastes so bad. Yeah. How bad think, is it? I don't think <laughs> it tastes so bad. I don't think people really like it. I think people drink it. Nah. To say they drink a How many no. times have you tried a lot of them? There's because, so many. Because what I you're tried, saying, I tried. It's like you've enough. It's, it's like you've had Coca Cola and you say, I've tried "Oh, I hate all soda." Where like, I go, nobody can could possible you, like this. You got to do the drinking it and saying one. they like it. I'm not doing it. It's a probiotic. That's why I drink it. I don't love the taste of it, but I do love how my body feels after oh, I drink it. I truly it. love cer certain brands. I love. Yeah. Uh, I think Chris would be on this. What kombucha? I'm out, dude. People drink it. To say they drink it. We should have a kombucha yeah. fridge in here with the dirty, nasty jelly beans. And so when you mm. have to do a punishment, you have yeah. to yeah, yeah. drink kombucha. kombucha. I think it's one of those things that makes people feel like they're better than you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, That's man. what I'm saying, buddy. You're That's right. what I I'm honestly I'm think. I think someone's like, oh, you're drinking water? <laughs> <laughs> I'm drinking a living food right now. <laughs> it's actually already alive before it goes into my body. So... I don't know. I guess my colon's just clean. I guess my probiotics are just better than yours. Uh huh. I have sea monkeys in my belly yeah, right now. I don't now care. This kombucha. <laughs> why? Why do I? I don't want my food to be alive. When I there's a reason we kill stuff before we eat it. I don't want it to be alive when it goes in my body. I don't like. I don't even like the idea of that. Yeah. That you're putting a. I'm putting. I don't want to swallow something alive. That's weird. Now you can you take imagine? your hipster kombucha and you get out of here. Because <laughs> <laughs> it is gross. All right. And we all know it, and you know it, and you know it. It's You're disgusting. not better than me. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to stick with my H2O, which is dead. My dead H2O. Mountain Dew. There's nothing alive in Mountain Dew. Nothing, I guarantee nothing can you. Li yeah. live in that. Yes. Getting dead people that environment. Drink that. <laughs> all right. Uh, time to move on to the Craigslist Freak of the Week. It is the playoffs now. It was the uh, first round of the playoffs. So we're in the first round of the playoffs. Uh, Craigslist Freak of the Year. So, uh, first matchups, four past champions going at it. The number one seed, the number 16 seed, 17 seed, and 32 seed going at it. Learn read four ads yesterday. Two of these ads will be moving on to the next round of the Freak of the Year playoffs. And, Moon, if you would shut down the votes, here's how it all Boop. turned out. Shut down. All right, in fourth place, and, uh, hey, congratulations to uh, Destroy Aikman for... Coming back into the competition as a uh, second chance playoff or plan uh, ad with 2.7% uh, of the vote, fourth place. Hey, made the dance. Yeah. Knocked out first round. That was the number 32 seed. Goodbye. Mm. In third place, this ad knocked out of the competition. It was the number 17 seed, Morgan Wallen. Insane. Insane. Morgan Wallen. Guys. This guy wanted to sleep next to your dead body and wanted you to pretend like you were a corpse and do corpse orgies and all mm -hmm. this kind of stuff. 10.7% of the vote. Not even a competitor this week? Collector of used panties, too. Crazy. Not even a competitor. What? So, hey, let's, let's give it up for Morgan Wallen. <clears throat> and here you go, ladies and gentlemen. Moving on to the next round of the Freaky Lear playoffs, uh, the top two vote getters. Congratulations to Demonica Lewinsky. <laughs> Which was our number sixteen seed? Wow. Yeah, that's a that's a gal who said. Well, she's gonna read it. She's gonna read it. She gonna oh, you're doing both. Okay. Read it. Gonna read well, it. Yes. Here we go. There I'll go. put it down. I can save you, woman for anyone. Thirty six years old, Vancouver. 
If you are cruising the space for straight, gay, or freak show hookups, you've been possessed by Satan. You've got the urge to do evil, unholy things to yourself and others. It's not too late to turn your life around. These unnatural acts you're looking for are devil acts, and you must repent. I'm offering free exorcisms at my home. I'm not affiliated with any church, but I know what I'm doing. I've got two years experience and have performed a total of five exorcisms and have been successful each and every time. You will writhe in pain, you will cry, you will be marked, you'll be naked and branded, you will have your genitals sliced and burned, but in the end, your soul will be saved. The end result is worth the journey. It may look like I'm smiling, but I assure you, I will be getting no pleasure from this. This is a service I'm providing mankind. We've gone down a dark path, and I'm doing my duty to course correct us. In lieu of a fee, I'll be taking in canned good donations. <laughs> the Lord is my shepherd. Well, congratulations to Monica Lewinsky. Wow. Moving on to the next round of the Freak of the Year playoffs. That's the number 16 seed. And congratulations are top vote getter for the week. And and no, no surprise here. Right. Mm -mm. With 55.6% of your vote, it's the tournament's number one seed, Scatatouille. Experimental dinner, woman for man, 48 years old, Toronto. I've been a chef for 20 years here in Toronto. I've crafted some of the best menus in town. I'm now uninspired, and I'm finding traditional meals boring. Looking for an adventurous culinary guinea pig. I will host at my home because I've got a pro kitchen. This will be a 10-course meal with wine. Our mouths will water together once we bite into this wild experimental menu. Instead of the usual proteins, I'll be using meats, spices, and vegetables that have the same taste and textures of human <laughs> waste. There will also be a course that will smell like old roadkill. Kaka. This is not for the weak stomached. <laughs> All of the courses will be paired perfectly with very expensive wine. There will be a dress code. You and I will not be wearing much. I'll put it that way. I also expect a romantic moment for dessert. No condom needed. You must be chubby, so I know you're a good eater. P.S. <laughs> Want to try my special ice cream? There you go. Congratulations, Scatatouille. Moving on. Our number one seed. There was no uh, There was no first round shocker. Mm -mm. Number one seed. Moving on to the next round of the Freak of the Year playoffs. And we'll have the next round or the next group of first round mashups uh, next Wednesday. Okay. Next Wednesday, a special day. Next Wednesday for the uh, next group of matchups for the Freak of the Year playoffs. Thanks, guys. And that's brought to you by Hot Shots Sports Bar and Grill, proud sponsor of Team Riz. Visit hotshotsnet.com slash Team Riz from, is it, is, I don't know how to pronounce this. Olath, O-L-A-T-H, Olath, Olath, Kansas. Olatha, right? I think it's Olatha. 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 Tina went to high school. Olatha? Damn it. Yeah. It's Olatha, Kansas. Oh, you know somebody that went there? Tina. She's from Kansas City. She, Olitha East. Olitha? I believe it's Olitha. All right, whatever it is. From Kansas, Connor Lawson. <laughs> is whatever our, it is. Connor from Kansas is our uh, <laughs> team. Riz, remember the day, uh, Connor has been a listener of The Riz Show since 2017 and is a current podcast weirdo. Loves the current crew and is uh, really glad the show is still on and going strong over the past year. Aww. Connor's favorite segments, three and five, Freak of the Week, and whenever we eat the weird jelly beans. <laughs> Connor from Kansas, Connor Lawson, is our Team Riz member of the day. Get super sweet Team Riz member of the day soccer jersey. Get yourself signed up, 1057thepoint.com slash Team Riz. It is 713. Friday. Crab on Celebrities next. First look at the track of the weather. Moon coming at you. Traffic brought to you by Worldwide Technology Raceway. The NTT IndyCar Series returns to Worldwide Technology Raceway on August 26th and 27th. It's time to grab the best seats before they are gone at WWTRaceway.com. We got a roadblock due to a crash uh, 55 southbound at Broadway to Virginia. The exit right there. Your point forecast. Rain should end by, in, by the mid-morning. Very warm and muggy after that. High of 103 with a heat index near 110. This is a swamp pass alert. Low of 83. Ooh. Right now it's 82. <laughs> All right. At the Point Studio, your point forecast is brought to you by CarX Tire and Auto. Brutal. All right, Lauren, what do you got? Rest in peace to Randy Meisner. Who is going to inherit Saturday Night Live after Lauren Michaels leaves? And things are looking up. Things are looking up for everybody. You'll find out. All right, we got that. <laughs> <laughs> we, got, 